Hello and welcome to the next series of videos focusing on the A-Level Mathematics course. Uh, this video is going to focus on differentiation using trigonometry, which is something new for the second year content. The thing to remember with all differentiation is the basic ideas with differentiation are all the same. Things like stationary points, turning points, gradients, all the, all the things you learnt in the first year to do with dy by dx are true regardless of how complicated the differentiation gets. But what we're going to look at in this video is how to find the derivative of sine and cos. So the first thing we really need to think about is going back to small angle approximations. So we know that when x is small, sine x is approximately x, and cos x is approximately 1 minus x squared over 2. Now that's really important for differentiation because when we look at first principles we're looking at the limit as h tends to zero. This bit here means h is small for the purposes of this. Okay, h gets close to zero for the purposes of this differentiation, h is small. So that's, that's important for finding the derivative of sine x and cos x by association. So we're going to do this from first principles. But once you learn the rule, you don't have to do this every time. So what we're going to do is start off as we usually do, letting f of x equal sine x. Which means that the derivative is going to be the limit as h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So this allows us to now use the function we have here in this formula. So we get sine x plus h minus sine x all over h. Now notice what we've got here. We've got sine of x plus h, which we don't really want kicking around. We want to be able to expand that. When we did differentiation from first principles in the first year, we just expanded the brackets. But we know sine, cos, and tan don't work that way. So we know that we can use the addition formula to expand that bracket there. So this is the limit as h tends to 0 of sine x cos h plus cos x sine h minus sine x all over h. So what we can do now is we can start to factorize bits. Remember, we want to get stuff with similar functions together in x. So we get sine x cos h minus 1 
over h plus cos x sine h over h. And I'm just going to put brackets around this whole thing. Now, this is where the important bit comes in with what we were talking about before, with the small angle approximations. So, when h is small, this bit here, cos h minus 1 over h, that's going to tend to 0. And I'll let you work that one out yourself if you want to. So this bit here is going to tend to 0. This bit here, sine h over h, that's going to tend to 1. And typically for this type of question, you'll be told that. You don't have to remember it. It will be in the question, you may assume that as h tends to 0, these are true. So you don't have to remember those typically. So this is equal to, now because sine x doesn't have any h's in it, we can take that out. And the same thing with the cos x. We know this cos h minus 1 over h tends to 0. And sine h tends to 1. We know, therefore, that this is equal to, so this is 0, so this whole term goes, this is 1, so we just get cos x. So the derivative of sine x is cos x. Question 1 in the exercise that I'm going to set uh, that I'm going to suggest you go and do is doing the other way, so starting with cos and showing what the derivative is. So we're just going to, I'm just going to tell you what those are for now, and we're going to have a little bit of practice. So this is the relationship we end up with, that sine x differentiates to cos x, and cos x differentiates to minus sine which means we can kind of think about this as a cycle, which may help um, remember because you need to learn these. So if we have sine x, that's going to differentiate to cos x. Cos x differentiates to minus sine x. And what do we think minus sine x differentiates to? Minus cos x. which then in turn will differentiate back to sine. So that's kind of this cyclical idea that you can just keep differentiating and it'll repeat itself. Now what's going to be very useful later on is the fact that integration does this backwards. So differentiation goes sine to cos to minus sine to minus cos back to sine. Integration goes the other way around. Sine to minus cos to minus sine to cos to sine. So you can think about this to really help you figure out or remember the different relationships. So we're going to have a look at a few examples now. These are all relatively straightforward. So... If we want to find dy by dx when y is 6 sine x. Well, this is pretty straightforward, as I said. Sine x differentiates to cos x. So 6 sine x 
differentiates to 6 cos x. The number on the front doesn't do anything. Likewise, if we have this example, a half cos x, cos differentiates to minus sine. So this is minus a half sine x. The difficulty comes when we start putting numbers inside the function, like this. Now we're going to look at why this happens in a later video, but the way to think about this. The sine changes to cos. The 2x, so whatever's in here, stays there. Then the 2 goes on the front. So sine 2x differentiates to 2 cos 2x. And likewise with the fourth example here. Now this is made slightly more difficult by the fact that we've got 4 pi. Don't panic if that happens, just remember pi is just a number. So treat it like a number. So let's do this in steps. Cos goes to minus sine. I know it's minus, so I'm going to deal with that later. The 4 pi x all stays there. We then times on the front and we're there. So you can think about the general rules like this. If y equals sine of ax then dy by dx is a cos ax. If y equals cos of ax dy by dx is minus a sine a x. And those rules you need to learn. They are not in the formula book. As I said, the thing with differentiation is everything else generally stays the same. So we're going to look at one more example before I set you the questions. So we have this example here. A curve has equation y equals a half x minus cos 2x. And we want to find the stationary points on the curve in the interval x is between 0 and pi. So we know for stationary points from year 1 content, we know that this means dy by dx is 0. So that's going to be our starting point, finding dy by dx. This is really important because this pretty much tells us we are solving a trig equation. Probably something from here. So I'm going to guess this is going to be step one. This is going to be step two. And that's something you can do with this type of question, or any question where it's a bit more problem-solving type, is break it up, make notes, and then number the order that you think you're going to have to do things in. So, let's do that. So we've got y equals a half x minus cos 2x. So... We need to find dy by dx and then set it equal to 0. Differentiating this, a half x just differentiates normally. Now cos goes to minus sine. We've got a minus on the front, so that's going to change it to a plus. The number, on the the number inside sticks on the front. So that, that's what this differentiates to. 
So at the stationary point, we know that dy by dx equals zero. So therefore, a half plus two sine two x equals zero. This is now the equation that we wanted to solve. So we get sine two x is equal to minus a quarter. Now something to pay attention to, we're solving for x is in between zero and pi. This is two x, so we need to solve for two x is between zero and two pi. Something else that is very, very important. With this example, it's been very, very clear, but it's in general, you must be working in radians. Always. So whenever you're differentiating or integrating and using trig, you must work in radians. Whether, regardless of whether it says this or not, you will always be working in radians, otherwise it doesn't work. So we're going to solve this equation. So principal value, secondary value. When using your calculator, your principal value will come out as this. So that's something we need to pay attention to. Because don't forget, we're solving for x is between 0 and pi. This doesn't, or 2x is between 0 and 2 pi. So this doesn't fit. So we're going to need secondary value and third value. So secondary value, pi minus this. So we get 3.39. So this is one of the answers that we want. I'm going to go to a little bit more because don't forget, in general, we want our answers, our final answers, to three significant figures. So giving our working to more means we don't round too early. To get the third value, remember you take your principal value and add 2 pi. So I'm just going to type that in again. Oops, three, zero, five. Okay, which tells us, so this one we ignore. So now we can find our x values. So we know that x, dividing this one by 2, 1 1.70, dividing this one by 2, whoops, 3.02. Okay, making sure we don't round too soon. Okay, this is okay, but just remember to keep the full exact number in your calculator for the purposes of working things out. Now we want the coordinates of the stationary points. So we need to work out the y coordinates. We've got two x coordinates, so in our working, let's be clear. So when x equals 1.70, y equals a half times 1.70 minus cos of 2 times 1.70, which comes out to three significant figures to 1.82. When x is 3.02, we do the same thing. And we get 0 0.539 to three significant figures. So therefore, the stationary points are 1.70 1.82 and 3.02 0.539. Now you've got that idea, you can now go away and practice using the exercise from your textbook. Thank you for watching.